Okay, it's rolling. Alright, so in this video we're going to talk about our um, ideas and thoughts about Sarah Kane's Blasted. Uh, it's the second week now uh, that we've been in our rehearsal period. Uh, Maya isn't here, so we're taking this time in order to make a video and start discussing our ideas and figuring out what we wanted to do with it and the direction we're heading. Uh, okay, so we, um, we, we wanted to try and show as much as we could of the taboo wise. Yeah, but obviously, but there's, we had limitations within school, so like we can't show yeah. obviously the rape scene, and we couldn't show. Um, there's a couple of bits where, for example, my character called Kate passes out, yeah. and uh, Bruce playing Ian has to rope up against her and all that kind of stuff. There are some we? things that we can't show in the school. Yeah, you know, yeah, the there's, there's limitations, and there's also limitations on how long it has to be, so we can't really. We, it being such a long play and really dialogue heavy um, between three, two or three main characters, it's kind of hard to pick a specific point where you can show most of Kane's, um, I, I guess, her techniques and her style, mm -hmm. as well as trying to show a good enough part of the story to, um, and given enough time for each character to play and the story to make sense. Um, going on, kind of what we're trying to do with Kane's style, we we like my interpretation of Kane's style is she likes to show very kind of current topics, like uh, in Blasters yeah. about war, and I think at the time there was a war going on where there was a massive controversy of soldiers raping a lot of people. I believe it was in South Africa, yeah. and so she likes to try and she, she likes to try and in a place show find different it's kind of very graphic ways of trying to approach that topic yeah. so that people will I guess I guess the way that she does that or for me is it, it made the topic stand out yeah more it's to me. It like a lasting really, impression yeah a big impression on me um, I, I guess it has more of an impact on the audience too um, but yeah because the more kind of graphically shocking it's the more you remember it and I think she wanted she I think she's always had this intention of trying to make it the most shocking or the most yeah. kind of graphic she can. Um, yeah, I agree with that as well. So we're trying our best to try and bring that across with the, like, we're trying to find, like, trying to show very dark themes, like yeah. the kind of twisted relationship Ian and Kate have, like, with a hint of possibly that Kate was underage or when they were first seeing each other, um, possibly yeah, pretty, is still under, sure underage. Well. Um, I, I guess it's just, it, it, that is the struggle of trying to mm. to show it without showing the things that we can't show, yeah. if you know what I mean. So our idea for, for the rape scene specifically, this is the one that we're kind of struggling with the most or most worried about yeah. trying to approach. We're wanting to cut it, add a blackout in to a specific point on, I think... So I say the line, um, you're listening to me now. And now you agree it. with anything I say and that, we want to do it. a blackout and then we're going to have a blackout to the point where the soldier comes up and it's me kind of just laying over... Bruce kind of almost or yeah. Nate knelt by the side of him and I asked him the question you never fucked a man before and it, and it goes into the Don't soldier's want, second monologue like, yeah. as well which we've already performed and uh, mm -hmm. basically it's we're, we're going to change the set a little bit we're wanting to add in a blackout and then this sort of rise and this dim sort of red light and the specific yeah. reason for that is red could be shown for sort of pain as well as sort of discomfort danger and stuff right Chip You'll see this later. Discomfort, <laughs> and uh, I guess it adds a really sort of sadistic look to it all. And I guess that's also a sort of uh, semiotic to to the hint of yeah. rape itself as well. Um, in terms of like the, the staging of that scene, obviously, before the soldier comes in, it's supposed to be this luxury five-star hotel. And so, yeah, so we want the idea of it to make it... Like almost like it seems to be like the perfect place is perfect. Yeah. In the in the script, it re it's described as being very sort of like luxury. Well, mm -hmm. not it, 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 luxury, yeah. I would say in a way. Yeah. Um. So we've seen uh, past performances of this on online and on YouTube, and seen how they've approached making the set, mm -hmm. uh, having quite like the bed as being a predominant part yeah. and a sort of eye catching. Uh, part of the whole set because I, th I think it's also we like the idea of the the staging where they are the hotel room being really like this beautiful kind of immaculately well kept yeah. hotel room but then suddenly you got the contrast in this utter or oh, utter horrible scum of a person as, well. as but I mean like in Ian so Ian's the one who's staying in this beautiful well, place think... and he has this young innocent girl who's 
more kind of yeah. used to it. But then, like, I, I love the idea when Kate goes there, she's not used to anything like this. It's all yeah. very grand for her, but for Ian, this is all the same. But and I, I like the idea that kind of Sarah Kane has the idea of, like, even the worst type of men very always true. seem to be get, like, the far furthest in life. He's used to staying in five star hotels. I would way. say that the progression of the stage itself being such a luxury and then slowly destroyed by war and then the actions that happen so like the the mini fridge the, the tables and the chairs being knocked over mm. the blood that's going to be on the floor like, hell the even massive hole inside the wall as well i think that's supposed to represent that whole idea of that sadistic sort of rape uh, yeah. culture that she was sort of wanting to approach yeah. and that uh, idea of uh, uh, something maybe beautiful at first but can be completely destroyed by something so yeah i'll just the like, effects in war as well like how quickly it's something like it's a nice yeah. and it's only soldier changing but the, the the hotel room doesn't change and suddenly it's one mortar bomb just ruins everything i think the thing is it's the war it's War is the thing that's brought them all together. Yeah. I really find it interesting how the soldier is not given a name and represented as just soldier mm. with such graphic and violent intent as well. And that's well, all like the in. way he kind of stuck, like he says, like obviously soldiers to represent all soldiers at the time. You can yeah. tell, um, and his Sarah death Kane. being such an overlooked thing as well. Yeah, I think is really interesting well, because kind of he hasn't got a off, name. Yeah. He hasn't got a name specifically because he is just known as a soldier. He does his job. He's not an individual. Mm -hmm. He is somebody that is fighting in this war because he has to, and he's bringing in all the uh, these other. Yeah, it's like the, the only kind of actual only kind of characterization you get of this soldier, which is not kind of supposedly generalized. It's hinted at, isn't it? it well? it's, well, it's just like, it's Col. Like, Col is the only person, the only kind of actual personal yeah. thing you get to know about the soldier. You get to know the soldier's done all these kind of things, but then it's also implied that all soldiers do that. When you hear the soldier speak, he's like, yeah. you're not a soldier, you haven't seen this, this and this, you haven't done this and this and this. As if they've all been yeah. sort of been through the same torture mm -hmm. in a way, they've done the same things, yeah. they've experienced the same things. And, and I, I, I kind of like the idea that Sarah Kane's trying to play the idea that it's not a man is not capable of doing that himself until he's like the soldier's not a man anymore. If that makes he's sense, he's been pushed to the very yeah, edge. Yeah, like he he down. talked about he, when he was at home, he was clean, and when he had Carl, yeah. he had and stuff like that. There's, there's a specific point which I think that is shown most is we have two monologues for the soldier. The first one's very sort of uh, what, uh, monotone in a yeah. way, I guess, and you can um, see how. Like he's trying to be like, like he's almost like trying to prove a point to yeah. Ian like yeah, you're not a yeah, soldier yeah. you haven't done any of this I've seen this I've done this would you, could you do that yeah. and then the next one is the literally one, like pure like Pat he's like he's, it's emotionally extreme, broken emo it's after the rape yeah. has just happened and for that to be such an explicit thing as mm. well and it to be such a uh, a graphic uh, part of the play I guess that all tension will be very yeah. very high as well so that means that the emotion that comes out of the soldier. Is, is sort of like impact and what he's And I think it's saying. also one of the first times you actually, there's small hints of emotion from the soldier, but that is actually the first time, like when, uh, like in the script, yeah. we're not showing it, but he. He seems very sort of tight, um, a very brooding type yeah. character. Yeah, well, he's kind of very like, like, he's always trying to prove a point and he's always kind of like, almost like yeah. sarcastic in tone, especially for the first monologue. And we're trying to play with the idea of that he's kind of judging. This Ian guy trying to uh, sum, him, sum him up and yeah, seeing yeah. if, it, and because Ian calls himself a soldier and all that kind of stuff, yeah. but then he's just trying to prove a point to him. But at the end of it, I think he is literally just like, "Look, you haven't done any of this," yeah. and it's pure emotion because I think war does actually break you down. Um, but it, it is really interesting trying to see because the more like even the soldier when he first comes in, like, f f like the two worst guys, like Kate. You see her with all this innocence, and then she loses her innocence. Yeah, and I, they all, they, each character individually breaks down over the period of time mm -hmm. that they but spend like, inside that hotel room, which is something I find really interesting. They've all been in this collective, well, especially with like the environment changing around yeah, them as well. Especially well, like, them too. Well, it's like Kate's a weird one. Like Ian, definitely. You see Ian from like the top of power to suddenly a soldier coming in, and he's completely ruined by the end of it. He, yeah, the soldier comes in, and he's he. As soon as he comes in, he takes a he's the powerful figure in the room. He strips that away from Ian, and even then, though we're not going to be able to show this due to time yeah. limits as well, even at the very end of the play when. Ian's blind on well, the floor. Well, that's when Ian's dying, the worst, so that's when he's issue, completely... It's, and having to even eat the, mm -hmm. the dead baby as well. I, I find that the dead baby is quite an interesting part. I think it's the fact well. that it's just kind of symbolic. Like, it's especially representing when the, the death of the youth, of the youth that is come, that would have been yeah. if war hadn't... And especially because, like, occurred. especially when, like, when the baby dies, Kate's just like, oh. And that's one thing, I think Kate, if anything, has got... At the end of it, she's got... I want to say weaker, she's got more... 
she's, I think she's yeah. become. I think you see the. I think Kate's the perfect representation of kids in war because you get this innocence and then they get used and all this kind of stuff and by the end of it they're just completely just she, blank they have yeah. nothing left like at the end of it she's like I'm going to get some food and it's like how and she's like she I'll talk to the soldiers yeah. It's, yeah. It, it's a really disturbing thing mm. but seeing the progression of each character including the soldier yeah. um, being sort of the one that pushes them yeah. forward if you know what I mean well um, I, I think it's like a representation of that war can War can break even the the most powerful, the most richest, or the strongest yeah. of people. Like Ian, at the start, he's yeah. like, he's, he, he thinks he's very macho arrogant. Man, he thinks he's yeah. yeah. Um, so this is basically our approach to what we're wanting to do with it. I, I'd say we we're not well, wanting to show it, it's yeah. our ideas. We're not wanting to show any sexual parts of the play. We want hints. We're it. going to hint at it, but we, we don't we're not allowed to, to yeah. show it nor nor do we think it's right to show it to you. Um and so those those are ideas of how we can yeah, actually this sort of gets kinda of blogs to kind of general overview and then we'll probably do more specific blogs either when Maya's here or not and about specific scenes or how we're gonna stage it like specific like we've just kind of overviewed it all. Yeah. But but yeah, yeah. brilliant. Awesome.